The orchestra in Mozart's day was about half the size of a, of a modern symphony orchestra, which, had, which has 70 or 80 people. There were usually 30 or even fewer in Mozart's day. So that's one significant difference. The instruments themselves were subtly different. They were the same instruments, the violins, the cellos, the oboes, and so on. But they were all, they all made a different sound. Um, the woodwind instruments had many fewer keys, much less metalwork on them. Um, the strings uh, had softer tension. They, had, they were much less tense. They had a different kind of bow, a um, different kind of bridge. And they make, it, therefore, a different sound, a sort of leaner sound. The uh, trumpets and the horns had no valves, so they were, they were playing only certain notes, and other ones had to use the hand, for instance, in horns. And the timpani, the drums, were very, very different. Instead of these large, booming instruments you have today, they were very small, um, and they were hit with wooden sticks, so they had this tremendously interruptive sort of sound. So every single instrument makes a different sound from today, a slightly different sound. Why I think it's so interesting and exciting to play these pieces on the instruments of the period is that they have, of course, the character which the composer expected. Um, the strings have a way of playing which is very clear and very clean, but much leaner. They don't use any vibrato, they don't use any, any wobble. Um, the wind, each wind instrument is different from, from, from another. Uh, not only the flutes are much more different from the oboes because they are less homogenized in those days, but also each particular instrument was often different because everything was handmade. Everything was exactly just made by one person. And so if you play with this group of wind instruments all answering each other and the strings making this different, much more articulated sound, it's not surprising, really, that it just sounds very good. It sounds very right. It's what the composer expected to hear. With this development of the form, Mozart achieved the peak of his orchestral work in these last symphonies. Roger Norrington. In this last symphony of Mozart, he really brings together everything he, he's discovered about how to write for the orchestra, particularly how to let the symphony be inspired by, by drama. He uses techniques which he developed in his operas. And in a way, this last movement is like a comic opera finale. It has lots of themes each of which is rather like a character in a, in a comic opera. Um, we, we hear a number of them, don't we, in this, in that opening. Which 
which has its own very comical sort of character. And then you have another another person. Dum -da -dum -da 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 and you have um Probably the ladies made, I should think. And these are all woven together in an extraordinarily good humoured way. Um, it's very easy to listen to, it's very delightful, the tunes are very delightful, but gradually you realise that he's building this wonderful structure, like creating a great painting. An amazing structure, which is made out of charming details, but to, build, to be built up into something much grander and much greater. And this is typified by the fact that he even employs fugue, something which is more normally associated with church music, like, like Bach, B minor mass, for instance. Grand fugues where e individual voices sing the same tune, one after the other. And he introduces that in a kind of comical, serious way. And I think that's one of the features of this music of this period, um, is that they were able to combine humor and seriousness, a sort of light, flippant humour with a high seriousness at the same time. It's something which the 19th century forgot about. They had to divide it up. It was either funny or very serious. At this time, it was both, and that's one, something which made, of course, the operas incredibly successful. So, towards the end, uh, he combines no less than five of these themes at the same time, giving each one equal prominence, which is an extraordinary feat. And you hear, um, in the, in the, at the very end of this finale, all the characters coming together and all these five themes being given at once. Mm -hmm. 